Welcome to the vocabulary lesson for the Hitch 3 scene for the movie. Let's get started. In the beginning of this scene, there's a woman and she starts by saying, did I call it or did I call it? To call it, that's kind of an idiom. Uh, it means to predict something, to know something about the future. So she predicted something. She's talking about a uh, a relationship, two people dating, two famous people dating, and she guessed how long they would stay together. She called it, she predicted it, she guessed it. To guess something about the future, we say you call it. All right, to move on, and then uh, a little bit later, she says the line, um, what is it about guys that makes them want to screw anything that moves? Okay, to screw is an idiom, uh, kind of slang for sex, to have sex with. So she says, why do guys want to screw anything that walks? It means, why do guys want to have sex with anybody, with any woman? Okay, so screw means have sex with. It's slang. It's a little bit rude. Okay, and he's, then she says, even when they're going out with someone as awesome as Allegra Cole. Going out with is also a kind of idiom. To go out with someone means to date them. So if you say, I'm going out with her, it means you're dating her. If I'm going out with him means you're dating them. You're dating them seriously, going out with them. Okay, and then of course the word awesome means great, wonderful, fantastic. And in the next sentence you see the word fabulous, which has a similar meaning. Great, amazing, wonderful, fabulous. So fabulous and awesome, they're similar. All right, and then we go a little bit farther down, and she uses the verb run in a different way than normal. She says, are you kidding? Of course I'm going to run it. Well, this woman is a writer. She's a journalist, a gossip writer. She writes about celebrities. And she says, I'm going to run it. It means I'm going to print it. I'm going to publish it. So sometimes uh, magazines and journalists, they use the word run to mean print or publish, and that's what she means here. I'm going to run it. I'm going to publish it. And then she has a little bit of slang in the next line. She says, why should she, she's talking about the female character, Allegra Cole, this beautiful, rich person, why should she waste her heart on some Swedish aristobrat? So she's insulting the man who was cheating. And uh, aristobrat is a combination of two words. Aristo means aristocrat, and aristocrat is a rich person. So aristocrat is what that means. Aristo means aristocrat, a rich person. And then brat is a spoiled person, a person who, uh, we, we use it with children actually a lot, who uh, has no discipline, no control. They get everything they want. If they're angry, eh, they yell and they scream, eh, that's a brat. They, they don't behave well. So a brat is a person, usually a child, who does not behave well. An aristocrat is a rich person. So she's saying this guy is a rich guy who behaves badly. And she says even if he is gorgeous, gorgeous means beautiful. Then she says if he's stupid enough to cheat, the world should know he's dumb enough to get caught. To cheat, you know, probably know the normal meaning of cheat. Uh, like cheating on a test, but cheating in a relationship means uh, you have sex with someone else, someone who is not your partner. So uh, if, if this guy, he had sex with someone who was not his girlfriend, he was cheating on, we just say cheating on, cheating on his girlfriend. Okay, and then next she goes into her office and one of the guys in the office is joking with her. He says, bitter party of one. He's calling her bitter. He's pretending that's her name. The word bitter actually means someone who's very angry and sometimes also lonely. So he's kind of insulting her a little bit in a funny way, saying she's a lonely, angry person. And then he says, party of one. Party of one, party in this case means group, a group of people. So party of one means a group of people, but there's only one person in the group. And what he's doing, he's joking. He's pretending they're at a restaurant. Because we say this phrase in a restaurant. You go into a restaurant and the person might say, um, how many people in your group? And you say, oh, we have five. And you say, oh, okay, a party of five. 
party of five means a group with five people in it. So maybe you go in, the person looks at you, they count the number with you, and they might ask you, oh, party of six? And you would say, yes, yes, we have six people. Okay, and then, uh, then they talk about her vacation. He's, uh, he says, uh, Barbados, by myself, I wouldn't last five minutes. So this woman was recently on vacation in Barbados. That's where she saw this famous guy who was cheating on his famous girlfriend, and she took pictures. So she was, Barbados is just a tropical island in the Caribbean, I believe. Okay, and then she's talking about her vacation. She says, it was just what the doctor ordered. That's another kind of slang phrase, just what the doctor ordered. Just what the doctor ordered means exactly what I needed. Exactly what I needed. So if you say, wow, this drink is just what the doctor ordered. It means maybe you're very thirsty, so you really needed a drink. So it means just what the doctor ordered. Anything. It could be anything. And then she describes what she did on her vacation. She said, I read a couple books. I flirted with my scuba instructor. To flirt is to tease somebody. Usually uh, uh, you're interested in them. You're attracted to them. You think they're handsome or beautiful. And you tease them. You play with them. You chat with them uh, because you are attracted to them. Uh, maybe you want to date them. So you maybe you joke, you laugh. You're trying to get them to like you. We call that flirting when, you're, when it when it's, has kind of a little bit of a romantic feeling. And then her uh, friend says, oh, and apparently you never left the office. Never left the office is another kind of idiom. And it means never stopped working. If you don't leave the office, it doesn't really mean you're stuck in your office. It just means you never stop working. Okay. Even though she was on vacation on a tropical island, she was still doing her job. She never left the office. And then she says, yeah, that's great. And then he says, this is where a boyfriend comes in handy. Comes in handy means is useful. So if, if something comes in handy, it's useful. Uh, a boyfriend comes in handy on a vacation. It means it's, good, it's useful to have a boyfriend. It's good, it's fun to have a boyfriend if you're on vacation. That's what he means. Uh, if you're building a house, a hammer comes in handy. A hammer will help you build the house. It's useful. All right, later down in the, uh, in the uh, conversation, uh, her boss comes in. He interrupts their conversation. And he says, spoken like a true cynic. A cynic is a person who is very negative and uh, very pessimistic. They always think something bad will happen. They always think other people are kind of bad. They don't trust people. That's a cynic. A cynic is a person who's very negative, very pessimistic. And then the woman says, no, I'm not a cynic. I'm a realist. A realist is a person who is very practical. We've had that word before. It means they, they see reality. They see the world exactly as it is. They are not fooled. They're not confused. So a realist is not a pessimist, and they're not an optimist. They are kind of in the middle. They see things in a real way. So she says, I'm not a cynic, I'm a realist. And then he has a long sentence. He says, you are a realist masquerading as a cynic who is secretly an optimist. Masquerading as means pretending to be. You are a realist masquerading as a cynic means you're a realist pretending to be a cynic. You're not really a cynic. You're pretending to be. You're masquerading as a cynic. You're pretending to be. All right, and then down later in the conversation, her boss is kind of insulting her. He says, you are becoming a sick workaholic lunatic. Okay, a lunatic is a crazy person. Crazy person. You, maybe they have to go to a hospital. A lunatic, a very crazy person. And a workaholic is a person who works too much. Maybe they're addicted to their job. They're addicted to work. They never stop working. They never relax. They're always working, 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 working too much. We call that person a workaholic. And then he says, and this is the kind of nervous, overwrought behavior. And he gets interrupted. But overwrought behavior. Overwrought behavior means too much. It usually means too much energy, too much nervousness. So 
He's saying you're, you're, you're working too much. You're too energetic, too crazy, too nervous. You need to relax. You need to slow down. Your behavior is overwrought. It's too strong. It's too nervous. It's too energetic. Overwrought. Okay, and then she interrupts him. She tells him uh, what kind of, what she did on, on uh, the island. She says, I got pictures of Sebi with a busty brunette. Now, Sebi is just a name of a character. It's the rich uh, Swedish guy that she got a picture of on the beach. He's, a, he's not a big character in the movie. You never see him. Uh, but anyway, it's just a name. Sebi is just a name. It's not a normal American name, in fact. So just ignore it. Uh, but then a, with a busty brunette. So she got a picture of this Swedish guy, famous Swedish guy, with a busty brunette. Brunette means a woman or a man with brown hair. Busty means, a, uh, means with large breasts is what it actually means. Busty, large breasts. So it's a brown-haired woman with large breasts, a busty brunette. And then her boss is very happy and he says, oh, you will get a very big raise. A raise means, of course, more money. More money for your job, higher pay. And then he's surprised. He's very happy and he's kind of joking. He says, Jesus, you could find dirt in a snowstorm. Jesus, we sometimes say Jesus when we're uh, surprised or angry or emotional. We just say Jesus or sometimes we say God or wow. They're just It doesn't really have a meaning here. It just means you're emotional. And you could find dirt in a snowstorm. So this is kind of a, a, a funny little sentence. Dirt has two meanings here. So he's telling a joke using two meanings of this word. Of course, you know the normal meaning of dirt, like it, similar to dirty. But dirt is also slang for gossip. It means gossip, information about famous people or informa personal information about someone, secret personal information. So he says, you could find dirt in a snowstorm. So he's talking about in a snowstorm, it's very white, very clean. And if you find dirt, it means it's hard to do, right? It's hard to find dirt in a snowstorm if it's snowing. So what he's saying is you can find gossip anywhere. You can find gossip. You can find secret personal information anywhere. It's amazing. Okay, so he's, he's complimenting her, actually, because she does a good job with her. Her job is to find gossip and write about it. Okay, they talk a little bit more, and then at the end he says, Okay, I want that column on my desk by lunch. In this case, column means a newspaper article, a newspaper story. But it's a special kind of newspaper story. It's a newspaper story that appears... Uh, again and again and again. So maybe, maybe every week, maybe every day. The same writer doing similar stories. We call that a column. So she writes a gossip column. Every, maybe every week, she writes some story about gossip. So he says, I want that column. It means I want that article on my desk by lunch. Put it on my desk so I can read it. And then finally she says, so will you pay for my hotel? Right? She was on vacation, but she did some work. So she wants her boss to pay the hotel bill. And uh, she's kind of joking, and he laughs, and he says, No, no way. He says, he asks, For you to sip Mai Tais? I don't think so. So he's saying, uh, A Mai Tai is a tropical drink. It's a cocktail. It's an alcoholic drink. And to sip, the verb to sip, means to drink very slowly. So he's saying, you were in your hotel on a beach, you were sipping, you were slowly drinking your tropical alcoholic drinks, you were relaxing, I'm not paying for that. So he's saying, no way, get out means go home. I will not pay for your hotel because you were on vacation. All right, that is the end of the vocabulary for hitch number three. Listen to this a few times if you need to, just in a relaxed way, until you have a basic understanding of the vocabulary. Then go to the mini story. Okay, see you next time. Bye-bye.